record on the computer. Okay, so welcome everybody. Thank you so much for being on here tonight. We have a privilege and an honor to hear from my friend Krista. You guys, you don't even know how much I love Krista. I just love you so much, and I cannot even like thank you enough for doing this for us because you guys, this is a mama of eight who is going for diamond this month, right? So, um you have your hands full and it's the end of the month and she's taking time out of her busy life. They just got back from a trip. I'm sure you'll share all that. Um, so for her to be on here tonight, it, it just means everything to me. And I, you guys, there's so much more I can say. Like Krista has encouraged me so much in the last few months. If you guys probably don't recognize her, she has been on the leaders board um, that the company sends out like week after week, it seems, and her team's exploding and she gives all glory to God. So I'm going to try to stop stealing all your thunder and let you speak. Um, but I have one more. Oh, let me tell you one more thing about Krista. Sorry, I don't mean to embarrass you. Um, but um, I don't know if Jana even knows this, but maybe. Um, so here's the thing. So our team, as you probably know, Krista has been through a lot of hard times. <laughs> And Jana lost her daughter on Super Saturday. Well, Jana and Amber were right after that, just weeks after that, were supposed to come and do this huge event for Amber Sheffield, who's our senior Ruby on our team. And obviously, there was no way that they were going to be able to come. So, of course, we were going to cancel that meeting. Well, Krista and another friend named Heather, who were both jewels in our area, took she drove like two or three hours to come and do that meeting. And do you know, I still get people. I met a girl on the plane, actually, Krista, on the way to convention, who's in Emerald now. And she was at that meeting and she says it was your story that actually got her excited about everything. And I think that was your first time speaking, right? Like, yeah, I was terrified. But what I love is like, you got nothing from that. Like that is not your team. Like she drove all that way. And Heather too. Like, I just love our company. You guys, we have something so special with Plexus. That is not normal. Right. Mm -hmm. And I just, I can't even tell you like that blessed us so much. You always bless me. So I'm going to stop talking now and I'm going to let Krista share with us and I'm going to message people and say, get your booties on here because I don't want anyone to miss what you have to say. So I'm going to let you go ahead and, and just share your story with us um, and share with us why you think the momentum has been happening so much lately, if you don't mind. Sure. I'm going to mute everybody. Hold on. You, if, so, Chris, I'm going to mute everyone real quick so we have no background noise. And then if you don't mind, I'll unmute. unmute yourself. If I can mm -hmm. figure out how to do this. Hold on. Manage participants. All right. Mute all. Okay. All right, so there we go. I'm gonna mute me. All right, we're good to go. Well, hi guys. <laughs> okay, well, like I keep, I see your name as Amber. I'm like, that's not Amber. No. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm using my uplines um Zoom call because we invited their team as well. <laughs> I almost, I was like going to read your name. I'm like, wait, this is not Amber. Um, but yes, we used to do business together. I was in Lakeland, Florida. He's in Tampa. Um, and this girl believed in me before I believed in myself because I remember talking at a sip and see and then this event that she mentioned here and thinking I know to say yes because I know to keep taking steps out of my comfort zone but I was terrified so um yeah she's been a huge part of my business well listen you guys we literally got in from traveling for a month yesterday with eight children one of which has special needs my son Judah and one of his many diagnoses is epilepsy. So I'm coming off a day today, you guys, of a lot of seizures. We don't know why they're coming on so strong right now. Very little lack of sleep because we drove through the night from Washington to Minnesota and we were just crazy, but we were ready to be home. And we have two weeks to move out of our house and we don't know where we're moving. <laughs> like there's a lot of stuff hanging in the balance for the Deary family, but that's okay. It's part of our passion, which is just living with hands wide open. And tonight I'm like so nervous. And part of it is because I don't feel prepared. So let me just like clear the air really quick on two things. Number one, I'm very ditzy. I can be all over the place, just rein me back in. Like if I'm everywhere, just be like, girl, stay on track, um, especially on lack of sleep. But I did, I probably shouldn't. I have another slim and active mix right now. 
probably a bad idea, but I might just be like, Brr. okay. So I am a little bit flighty and all over the place, but number two, you guys, I'm still in process. I am in process with you. I'm in the trenches with you. I'm figuring this out with you. I have not arrived. And I think like the more I get into this business, the more I get into parenting, the more I grow in my marriage, the more I realize I don't know anything. Anyone feel me in that? Like the older you get, the more you realize, wow, I have a lot to learn. In my 20s, I thought I knew it all. I just turned 40 and I'm realizing I don't know a whole lot. So... <laughs> So I'm learning with you, but my prayer beyond this weird reflection that's on my face, you'll see that. That's kind of funny. Maybe it's through my window, the cracks in my window. But anyways, um, do you see that? It's driving me crazy. Hang on. Right, I don't <laughs> see anything. You don't? Okay, like look, here's my arm. Now you can see. Oh, oh now I see it. Okay. Um, <laughs> you anyways, look beautiful. Uh, <laughs> what was I saying? See, I already lost it. Um, okay, so my prayer though, I tried taking notes like on three different pages and I'm like, Lord, literally before this call, I just started pacing my room and just put my hands open. I was like, Lord, I still don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> and so I just trust you. And my prayer is that my story will just tug at your heart and will bring some sort of encouragement to you and your story and the, and the season that you find yourself in now. Um, and that my words would be his words. I've been with Lexus four years maybe four and a half years, somewhere in there. I've had seasons of crazy momentum. I've had seasons of feeling like I might as well quit. <laughs> seasons where there was nothing you could do to stop our growth and seasons that all we did was month after month go backwards. <laughs> and that was just fantastic. <laughs> you know, like I've had every season under the sun. Um, and that's kind of what I want to expound on. Um, is some of those seasons, some of the ebb and flow of, of what we've walked through. Uh, yes, we do find ourselves in momentum right now, but literally I can't give you some like magic formula as to why that is or a perfect message or a script or, or anything that I have done, but I can share nuggets that we've learned in the wilderness seasons because that seems to be like where the gold is found. It is the times that stuff doesn't make sense, the times that Everything in life brings you to your knees. The times that you do feel like you're in a slowdown or a slump, when you look back hindsight, you realize that's actually where all of the beauty is formed. Like every time. It stinks every time. <laughs> I'm trying to get a better attitude every time I hit those seasons again and again. And sometimes you even will walk a wilderness season in victory. Like, yes, our team's in momentum. But yes, at the same time, my son's seizures are going rampant and emergency medications aren't even working. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm at the same time walking in victory and the depths of pain, you know, and I think the further I grow in this, the further I've grown in my business, the more success I find, the more I realize this won't fix your life. Uh, success and no amount of money is going to heal a broken heart and fix a broken marriage. Um, and so the louder I will continue to proclaim, like there's only one source of that joy and love and that peace that we're all seeking. And if you allow this journey to do this for you, I believe God really gets a kick out of using this business and this opportunity to refine us, to shape us, to prepare us, um, that he'll use this to launch callings and to launch futures and to launch businesses, even outside this and to launch ministries, because there is something about this journey that really does peel back all your layers if you let it. And in the peeling back of those, those layers of your heart, you can either be exposed and like, wow, I don't like that and like quit <laughs> and run away. You could become totally bitter and resentful and angry, which that's not a fun way to live at all. Or you can embrace this process and grow in it. And truly you will see, it will never be the rank. It'll never be the income. It won't be the contest, the prize, the, the going on stage, tassel earrings, or whatever you're gonna wear at the luau in Hawaii. Like that's not what does it. It truly is who you're becoming along the way within this process, truly. like hands down. So when I first started, my, my health testimony had to do with depression, anxiety, literally the month before I joined Plexus, I wanted to take my life. I left my family and tried to figure out how to crash my car. Okay. So my health story is a totally different story. Um, but I started on Plexus Slim, the pink drink. That was it. That's all we could afford. I even say that loosely money was so crazy tight. We had walked through two very big valleys of financial troubles and, um, my son's brain injury and the trauma and just the heart pain and the grieving that came with this process of a surprise special needs journey. 
Um, and so my health completely turned around, but here I was at that time, seven children. My seventh was still a baby. <laughs> I had just barely gotten my sanity back and was functioning like a normal human being. And I had the audacity to just throw a post on Facebook while still a customer thinking, you know, I truly, <laughs> business was not on the radar, you guys. But my passion was that there's someone out there that needs this. And like, what if there's one more mom like me struggling in secret with depression, if I can help her? Cool. That was like as much as I thought about it, put the post out there, went back to homeschooling my crew and caring for my son and just back to normal life. But out of that post, a surprise business started. And, um, to rewind time a little bit. Oh, I don't even know, guys. I don't even know how much of my story to tell you, but we had been in network marketing as newlyweds back when we totally thought we knew everything. And um, Chad actually came to know the Lord through network marketing. So in my mind, I planned on supporting that company for as long as I lived because it gave me my husband. I don't think we would have ever even met, let alone married, had it not been for the way his life had been transformed. We were part of that business for years never made money. We always spent more a month than we ever made, but we grew a ton. Like, as you guys know, like we grew in personal development so much and, um, grew as a couple and, and we learned how to dream. And we were exposed to this vision for our life that we would have never had before. We were exposed to families who, who completely lived differently than anyone else we knew where the dad was home and the mom was home. And they actually wanted to be home. Like that was pretty cool. They actually like wanted to hang out together <laughs> as a couple. Wow. And they wanted to be with their kids all day, every day. That was crazy. So they had this time freedom, this financial freedom, and they lived this lifestyle that we had never even heard of before. And so we began to have all these big dreams and um, just think outside the box beyond the nine to five job. Okay. Well, Fast forward, we really sensed the Lord asking us to step away from that. And to us, that meant leaving like our closest friendships and everything. And he was just asking us to step out of that boat. Um, we needed to. Literally, we were going in debt every month because we love the business so much. We love what we were learning so much. We love the people so much. But the compensation plan, as much as we worked, it was not the best fit. And I don't know, maybe some people, I, I'm still literally, when I, I'm in contact with some people, no one's going time, <laughs> no one's breaking jewels. Like the equivalent of jewels here, no one in the U S it's the same jewels as 10 years ago. You guys, isn't that crazy? Like here we see new jewels every month. We didn't ever see that. I remember one couple becoming a diamond back then. Isn't that crazy in like years anyways. So that alone, the whole other story stepped out of it, big dreams thinking God's going to provide another way. We're stepping out of the boat. And that's when our finances crashed. <laughs> like it, we just fell apart, lost everything, our home, six rental properties, everything. And in that process, I still remember the day that I removed all of my dreams off my refrigerator, off our walls, off our dream boards and vision boards that we had made. And I put them in a file and I was tired of dreaming because it was too painful. Do you know what some of those dreams were? One of them said, go diamond, go pastor. And our dream back then was to have time freedom and financial freedom to then step into ministry, whether it was pastoring or the mission field or just simply our neighborhood, <laughs> whatever it looked like, um, and just do whatever God called us to do and have the freedom to just say yes to whatever it was, okay? Go diamond, go pastor. It was on every wall of our home. Another one was Alexis. Isn't that crazy? Alexis, there was no company cars or anything like that in that program. But Chad, one time made me figure out what car I would have if I could have any car. And I was like, I don't even care. I drove a Toyota Corolla. It had no air conditioning. It had crank up uh, windows. And I was like, I don't care. Like cars are not my thing. He's like, no, you got to figure it out. So I started paying attention to cars on the road and I chose Alexis and he made me test drive it, which was terrifying. And he made me pick out the colors and like everything. And that picture was on our fridge for years. And lo and behold, I ended up in a company with Alexis. Isn't that crazy? Um, but I remember removing vision from my life, like choosing to not just be content with what we had. I was thankful. We had a tiny little rental home, everything on our bodies, all clothing, all shoes, all furniture was given to us as hand-me-downs, food stamps, food pantries, church ministries. Like that's how we were living, you guys. 
And I was tired of having dreams. It just was not working. And I felt like I was dragging my children through that. Like here, let's dream of having a, a playground. Yay, you're never gonna see the day. Like, what was the point? You know, it was breaking my heart. So I stuck all those dreams in a file. But I also remember the day about a year before Plexus that I told Chad, I missed who we were back then because we stopped reading, we stopped personal growth. We became more and more negative. We started seeing like the worst in everything rather than the best in everything. We weren't dreaming anymore. And I started Googling, trying to find out what was that list of books that we used to have? And where can I find like positive things to listen to besides like just that it had to do with that company. And so I had planned on my own to start listening to something positive, some sort of training every day. I had nothing to apply it to, but I decided I was gonna listen to a training a day and read a book a month. I never even like thought of joining a company. I just missed who I had been. I missed having dreams. I was craving it again. I was craving purpose in my life. Soon after that is when the depression set on strong after I had my seventh baby, PTSD, all of that. And in my journals, if I was to pull them out, they're literally right over here under my bed. They read, God, why do you even make me? I have no purpose to my life. This world's better off without even having me here. Chad needs a new wife. In fact, I picked one out for him that night that I thought I was going to take my life. Um, my kids need a new mom. Like I felt like I had no reason to exist. And now through the course of this, besides the hair on my lips, that's totally driving me crazy. Now through the course of this journey, not only did God restore vision to my life, a personal vision and wake me up again, but he restored vision to our marriage. He restored vision for our family. And now over time, and it's still cultivating, he's, he's launching vision for our team. So I've been able to ask the questions, who am I and who do I want to be? What do I want to be known as and known for? And how about our team? You know, we even changed our team name through this process. Who are we? Who do we want to be known as? When people think of Team Revive, what do I want them to think of? And that's kind of been some of the process that we've walked through. So when I joined January 2015, okay, my post kind of blew up. I didn't know how to answer people. I didn't even know Plexus had other products besides Slim quickly signed up as an ambassador and initially we took off fast okay by so i started in january by may i had over 5000 pv a month and i hit senior gold okay so my income matched chad's income as a senior gold it was such a blessing we didn't know what was happening to us neither of us ever thought chris Deary could do something i have no resume <laughs> i worked at a coffee shop in college that's the extent of anything i've ever done besides have babies <laughs> like literally <laughs> and so here's chat like wait a second i'm the entrepreneur what are you doing <laughs> i'm like i don't know take over literally i tried to give him my plexus business <laughs> which was part of one of my first fallouts but i went senior gold and right after i went senior gold is when judah's seizure started um life kind of felt like it was just i don't know it just was unraveling before us and that was my first stall i got stuck at senior gold for several months out of that stall so many things came we tried to figure out our roles in this business because i was the introvert who was trying to have chad take over but i had all these ladies on my team they're like why is chad posting on the team page you know they're like who's this guy we didn't start with him we don't want to talk to him about our poop you know krista come back so we had to make some adjustments during that time it was the first time i ever like looked at chad tears in my eyes with boldness this is the girl that couldn't even tell him whether or not i liked sushi like i i literally didn't know what i even liked in life nor have the courage to tell him but in this moment i looked at chad and said i believe i can do this we still talk about this moment and he looked like a deer in headlights to hear his wife say something like that and he believed me <laughs> he was so sweet and we started making adjustments he started learning how to help with meals and like around the house and he'd give me two hours a day to work in this made makeshift office in our garage granted this is in florida <laughs> no air conditioning small house but it changed a lot for my mindset. This was a season of like figuring out, Lord, is it okay that I'm more than a stay at home mom, homeschool mom? You know, I was in a community of just, just, I was in a community of homeschool mamas where that's all we did. We just homeschooled our kids all day, every day. And all of a sudden I think I'm an entrepreneur. Like what, is that even okay? And I'm having to dive into the word and I'm having to like seek the Lord. Like, is this you? Like, is this taking off because it's you? Or is it taking off as some joke? And this is totally not you. And I've been like, fooled, you know, like I need to hear from you, Lord. That was a season of figuring out 
Am I going to be led by the Lord or by what people say? Our pastor wasn't happy. Chad's Bible school class told us that if he or his wife were in network marketing, he could not be on staff at church and he would never launch, launch a church. And that was the only reason he was in Bible school. That's something that we had dreamt of for years. So we had some defining moments in those early days of, is God saying to do this? And who are we going to answer to? I'm answering to one person only. I can't let my life be dictated by, by what the people around me say. Now, there's something to be said for a multitude of counselors, right? But there are these moments where you have to say, what is God saying? And am I willing to follow him no matter what? So there's a lot that had to unfold in that first time that I was stuck at Senior Gold. Okay. Amidst that, amidst falling back in my points, I worked really hard to figure out how to get to Leaders Retreat. I did. My room happened to be next door to Jennifer Leaf. And um, she gave me some little nuggets that I applied. And the next month after, well, that month in October, I ended up sponsoring like 27 level ones after being in this desert. The next month we went Ruby. And it was a big catapult to then a year later, that next October going Emerald. So we did have a season there of momentum again, right? We kind of picked up. But I remember between Senior Ruby and Emerald feeling kind of stuck. I remember being paralyzed by the fear of success and having to confront that. Because now it wasn't fear of failure so much. It was fear of like, what if I do succeed? I don't even own tassel earrings. I don't own pretty dresses to like cross the stage. I didn't see myself as a jewel. So I had to focus on identity and self-worth and, you know, these who am I questions, right? We go Emerald thinking life is great. Got the Lexus a couple months later. And that next week after getting the Lexus, God said to move to Minnesota. Something we had sensed for four years. So maybe I shouldn't say he led us at that point. It was that we finally were ready and willing. And I remember knowing as soon as we knew it was time to move to Minnesota, I also had a knowing in my heart, I was about to enter a wilderness season. It wasn't going to be easy. It was gonna mean transition. It was gonna mean this couldn't be the focus of my life, which it had become. I worked so hard, right? But I, I worked in that season with this urgency. I felt like there was a mandate from heaven to get that done. Well, sure enough, there was. That was the only way that we were even financially able to move our family to a new state and start completely over and all the things. And I truly entered a wilderness season. Um, for two and a half years, I was stuck, stable, at Emerald. It's a beautiful place to be stuck. I know, but it was a gut-wrenching time to be stuck. And uh, we moved to Minnesota. Um, how situations fell through, and our, my mother-in-law, father-in-law were so sweet and invited us to come live with them for a bit. And we're thinking like a week or two. You guys, that week or two turned into six months. Um, that year, a couple of churches asked me to speak. Sounds wonderful. Terrifying. Like, I just, I, I was just like, Lord, what are you doing with my life? Why do I live in Minnesota? It's freezing in Minnesota. I'm living with my in-laws. Churches are asking me to speak. Are you saying like plexus is over? Like, do I go over here? What do you even want with my life? I found out I was pregnant with Sela, a pregnancy. I had just told the Lord, can we talk about that in a year or two? Cause I really want to go diamond. <laughs> like my mind was one track. You guys, I just wanted to keep growing my business. And the Lord was like, mm -mm, sister, yes, we worked on your identity. So you could see yourself as an emerald, but can I pull you back a little bit? You're actually more than a jewel. You guys, you're more than Plexus ambassadors. God didn't create you to just be a Plexus ambassador. He created you for impact. He created you for delight. He created you for a love relationship, a passionate relationship. He created you for so much. And it's really easy because we love our bubble so much. It's really easy to be, just be consumed by this bubble, isn't it? Like, it's all we think about. Like, we meet someone at the store and we think, oh my gosh, it'd be amazing for our team, right? And we go to the coffee shop. Oh my goodness, this girl would be amazing. <laughs> we, like, everyone we talk to, we're thinking one thing, plexus, plexus, plexus. Well, listen, I didn't like that about myself. I needed to pull back because I had lost the fact that my first thought should be, how do I love this person well? And maybe they have something for me. Or maybe I have something for them, but maybe it's not even plexus. Maybe it's just that they need to hear their love. Maybe they just need a, their coffee to be paid for that day. Maybe they need some encouragement. Like I had put God in this plexus bubble that everyone he brought into my life only needed plexus. And that's a small way to live and a small way to think. It's also a dangerous risk. It felt dangerous to fully open my hands up because I really wanted this to work all the way. I was, I, I, I'm quietly competitive. <laughs> I wanted to keep growing, you know, everyone else seemed like they were growing. Why wasn't I, you know, 
God was peeling back a lot of layers. So we're living with in-laws with seven kids pregnant with number eight. Who does that? And we did for six months. So I went from feeling like we were in victory. We had extra money to just feeling like such a goober, you know, trying to figure out where do we live? Why are we even in Minnesota? And what do we do with our business? You know, all these things. The next year, still stuck, mind you, second year of this. Um, I even wrote a couple things down. Who knows where I wrote that? Where did I write this? So these different things that were happening after Emerald. More than Jewel. Mm. I remember having this moment where I realized, wow, all this time that I have been frustrated that I can't do my power hours the same as I used to. I can't, I'm, I'm like frustrated I can't work like I used to because we're moving and we're transitioning and we're finding schools and we're getting Judah new doctors. And I felt like I was all over the place. I remember having this moment of like, I'm being robbed of the enjoyment of success. I worked so hard to be an Emerald. And then I was like complaining and frustrated and I truly like the enemy allowed, allowed me, the enemy, I don't, I don't even know. It's probably just all myself. I didn't even need an enemy. Like I allowed myself to be robbed of the enjoyment of success, the enjoyment of time freedom, feeling like I should be doing more, feeling like I'm just not enough and trying to almost get myself back into striving mode. I hadn't learned how to flow from a place of grace. <laughs> I wanted to strive and I was trying to strive and it was miserable and it was miserable for Chad and for the kids. I was just trying to figure this out, just working out the kinks and talking to the Lord a lot. I fumbled. I was just, you could say management mode, but I just was trying to figure this all out. Here I had this title. People recognized me at conventions. It was nothing, you guys. It meant nothing anymore. Cause I felt like I did not know what I was doing. <laughs> I felt like a fraud, like what the heck? I don't even know how I got here besides the grace of God. And I'm just a fumbling mess trying to figure this out. I don't know how to create an IPA challenge for the life of me, let alone graphics for it. Like all these things that consume me and the Lord's like, girl, like, don't you know I care so much more about the condition of your heart than your business? Don't you know I care so much more about your future and the future callings of your children? than your business? Don't you know I care about whether or not your marriage is thriving than your business? Like we had to get some things in order. It was time. It was time for full surrender and it took a process. I remember last September, after another talk with Jennifer Leaf, that girl's just really helped give me some nuggets, but um, deciding I'm homeschooling my kids. I always had, you know, but Chad had been helping a lot through this process and transitioning and everything. So nine o'clock to two o'clock, my phone was hidden completely away. And I was fully present homeschooling my kids. I made sure it wasn't the first thing I looked at. I made sure like it, it that Plexus had its rightful place in my life. And that felt very risky. And at times it felt like I didn't get everything done. And I, I haven't, I don't know the last time I ever actually felt caught up on my life because <laughs> I do have a lot going on, but I kind of had to line up some priorities of what God was saying my day needed to look like, no matter the risk. Um, and there were some pivotal turning points. So I'll walk you through a few. One was I had a gold ambassador, quote unquote, quit. It was the right thing for her to do. Do you know if you're so caught up in this bubble and someone quits and sometimes maybe they, sh they aren't supposed to, I don't know, but either way, they're the Lords, you know, but like she had overcome anxiety and depression. She had mental clarity again. She learned how to dream again. She went gold and literally quit the month she went gold because she realized her dream was to own a salon. And I have watched this beautiful journey unfold for her where she owns a fabulous salon. She is thriving and constantly she'll message me back. She still orders. She still has, I think like 50 points a month. And she's like, Krista, it started because you told me about this pink drink and I was set free and I could think clear. And I remember the dreams in my heart that I had laid to rest. And I learned how to have confidence again. And you gave me the courage to go pursue what God was asking me to do. And she has this beautiful salon that's also a ministry and she's doing so much so that was a that was a pivotal point for me to celebrate that to celebrate someone leaving even as a team on the team page to celebrate it not be scared of it we're more than plexus ambassadors we're more that's where god was calling her it was the best thing for her and i loved cheering her on so it made me pull back and say okay well who are we as a team then 
Are we just a team that, that we're here to help you go silver? We're here to help you figure out a rank up. We're here to help you become a jewel. Or what do I really want people to glean out of this? Because some people come and go, right? Some are going to be on my team page for one week and it might be all they need or all they want. Maybe it's just a month. Maybe they're just there for a year, but I pray if it's just a season that they leave impacted, not just in their health, but in their mind and in their hearts, that they get some sort of nugget that we're just making a ripple effect everywhere, whether they choose to build this business or not, that we're making better people, that we're going to be a team of healthy marriages and healthy families, right? Healthy finances. So that was a beautiful point. I remember another point of watching two teams simultaneously rank up. One happened so effortless, effortlessly, <laughs> effortlessly, I almost couldn't even figure out how it happened. It was crazy. And they've maintained ever since. One happened in striving, like losing their minds because identity was so wrapped up in the need and the necessity for that rank. And it had to happen right then. And by golly, whatever it took, it was going to happen. And that one, they didn't hit it again. And they were burned out. And for me, it wasn't what I wanted. And they happened at the same time in the same month. And I remember really processing because I wanted to be Sapphire bad. No, they were neither on my team, neither. Sideline sisters that I, I just love dearly and we've all walked this process together. Um, but I had wanted to go Sapphire so bad. And I remember trying to like thinking like, wow, okay, how do I want to do it? Like, and why do I want it so bad? Like, what if it takes five years or 10 years? Am I willing? Or what if it never happens? You know, it just, it was such good processing to start asking myself some questions. Like, why do I want it? When do I want it? Why do I want it in that time? You know what I mean? Like peel back those layers, Krista. The next month was July last summer, or maybe it was two months after. I don't know, but I remember last July, July 1st, I was cleaning up in my office and just worshiping and whatnot. And I felt like the Lord was saying, you could go Sapphire this month if you wanted to. And the second thing I heard was a rising tide will lift all ships. And I remember thinking, I don't even want to go Sapphire now. Like I just worked this all out with you. Why are you even saying that? Cause this isn't even time. Um, but I do believe a rising tide will lift all ships. And so I remember casting a vision for our team. Of going sapphire <laughs> but i knew how i wanted it to happen if it didn't happen that way we weren't going to keep shooting for it it was going to be day by day with the lord but i knew that in casting vision that rising tide would lift all ships right and we were in a season of a funk they knew i was in a funk i'm sure we had talked about it even but everyone was in a lull and all of a sudden we had a vision for that month but it felt hilarious because at the same time, I was like, I'm pretty sure we're not even going to reach it. <laughs> like, I don't want to reach it. And it's going to take some crazy striving. But I think I'm supposed to cast vision. Um, because sometimes people on your team, they may not be at the point where they've seen a diamond documentary and it sparks something in their heart. And you're like, I can be a diamond. Sometimes people have joined your team and they just, they haven't caught personal vision yet, but they'll rally behind yours. And that's exactly what I saw. And so that month we had a vision of going Sapphire. You guys, we were nowhere close to going Sapphire, but we went and we did an increase of 600 points that month. And we had record rank ups than we had ever seen. I had people, I had one girl go Ruby who it hadn't even crossed her mind to go Ruby before that. Um, we saw record rank ups, we saw breakthroughs and we were nowhere near Sapphire. But also another thing happened mindset shifts where I saw myself as Sapphire so much so that there were multiple times I even introduced myself as Sapphire <laughs> like wait, not Sapphire I'm Emerald actually like it just it shifted for me from that point forward I was a Sapphire I didn't care when it happened I it was already done it, it felt like we had totally done it but there was something else we had done we had maintained our culture see also in that time can you tell I am all over the place in that time we changed our name we came together and we prayed about what would God like to name our team and what's the purpose of our team? So we went from being the Deary Diamond team <laughs> to being Team Revive and with a passion that I don't even know if I can say it now because I'm like on the spot. <laughs> Impact over sales, people over points. That's a big, that's a huge part of our culture. But with Team Revive, that we, we are here to see health restored, to see dreams renewed again, 
wait, dreams, <laughs> health, hearts, and dreams, health restored, hearts renewed, and dreams revived again. So we're not just here for your, your health of your body. We're here for your heart health and to revive those dreams wherever they take you, whether that is to become a jewel or to take you somewhere else. So that month was a success. Even though we didn't hit our rank, it, there was so much celebration. You would have thought we hit our rank. <laughs> and because we stayed true to our values, it was impact over sales. We didn't go crazy. We didn't like give our whole house and the kitchen sink away trying to like get people to order. We stayed true to our culture, but we had a vision. We gave it our all. We knew that God values obedience. We'd leave the results in his hands and we went for it. And it was so precious seeing that rising tide lift all ships. Do I recommend that? Not necessarily, but that's just what was in our heart to do. And it was this great reminder of like, be led by the Lord, Krista Deary. Like, it's so easy to look to the right and the left and they're doing this IPA challenge. Cool. And it's working. Bam. We're going to do it too. And oh, wow. They're doing this contest over here. Boom. We're going to do that one too. But the more I tune in to what the Lord is saying over my team and stay true to that, even if that means there's a month of no incentives, I'm going to stay true to that. And when I stick with it, we do really well. And when I don't, you can feel it. The Lord knows my team better than anybody else on the planet better than I could ever dream of knowing my team. He knows the heartbeat and the pulse of my team right now and exactly what they need right now. And the more I lean into that, he's like the best upline in the whole wide world. And the more I lean into that, the more we flow, the more we embrace the journey because it isn't about the destination ever. It's always about the journey, right? Like I said earlier, he cares more about your heart and the condition of your heart than the condition of your business. So that was the defining moment. I remember last September going to Maui and walking into the first, it's probably called something, welcome reception or something. And it was the weirdest moment, the like aloha things up there and it's so fun, everyone looks so pretty and you know, just the whole bit. And I remember walking up and the words of that song, you could have all this world but give me Jesus, just start playing in my heart. It was another reminder of like, this is amazing and it's great and I want it for my team, but, they need to know it's more than a trip to Hawaii. Like they need to know this doesn't fix it. Like I said earlier, right? And as I was in Hawaii last year, it had to have been a divine setup because it was the most bizarre thing, but it was as if I bumped into every burned out jewel that existed. And I don't want to scare you if you're not a jewel because there's plenty of not burned out jewels. <laughs> and for some of us, we have our seasons and guess what? It's not Plexus's fault. It's, it's our own fault, okay? But I bumped into hurting people because once again, being a jewel and going to Hawaii doesn't fix it, right? And it was this further, like, further reminder of who I want to be, who I want my team to be, and what we're developing on our team. Like, it just went in me that much deeper of we will not just break jewels. We will break healthy marriages, break. We will launch healthy marriages. We will launch healthy families. We will launch callings and destinies and purpose. I refuse to let anyone on my team go emerald so that they can just burn out the next month. I refuse to let them hit a jewel rank so that their husband can like resent the business because of how they did it in an unhealthy way. And so that further set the course of a vision for our team. Okay. And it, it just helped me just further process like who, who we want to be. For me personally, if there's a, ever someone hurting, going through grief, walking through a trial in their life. They find themselves in a wilderness season where they're like, God, are you even still there? I want them to think of me. And I want them to think of my team because I've been open enough, hopefully on Facebook or how, however I've known them, that they know I'm in the trenches with them of walking through grief daily. Daily, guys, daily, it's in my face. That my son isn't who I thought he'd be, daily. But if there's someone out there that's grieving and they want to know that you can still walk in joy and freedom despite your grief, then they can holler at Krista Deary. If there's someone that's frustrated in their business and they want perspective, they can call Krista Deary. If they just lost sight of hope, that's who, that's who I want to be known for. And that's not going to be the case for any, everyone. Like figure out who do you want to be and what's your niche here? Because he's brought you here for a reason. So what's your niche? For some people, they have a niche of being like the bomb.com for trainings, right? They have a niche for like the coolest graphics or 
IPA things. Like they have their niches. I don't have those niches. <laughs> um, so I'm going to stay true to mine. <laughs> and that's, but I'll be really real with you and real honest with you and transparent. And I just hope it works. <laughs> you know, like, and here I am, because I am, you know, that's where we were at. Okay, so fast forward. Sorry, because I'll speed this up and we'll be done. Still stuck in Emerald, still ba barely maintaining Emerald, okay? Two and a half years. After that, I remember coming towards the end of the year and Chad and I just having a lot of talks and um, he got offered a great job. Fantastic, he hasn't worked in a couple years. Um, and, and simultaneously, you guys, Chad was walking through his own, own valley. God asked him to step away from working plexus and to rest which for an Enneagram three, if you're familiar with Enneagram, that's very hard. God was peeling back Chad's layers that his identity wasn't based on business or finances or anything. And he allowed, Chad was so precious in this and in this tension with the Lord, but he just allowed me to go soar and figure this out with the Lord rather than leaning on Chad. And Chad has just been through this great season simultaneously. Well, anyways, last December, he got this amazing job offer. And I allowed myself through some processing to at least be at the place where I was willing to give up how Plexus looked in our life. Um, Cause I knew it would mean I need to be back to full-time caregiving. A lot goes into the care of our son and, main, and taking care of the home if Chad was to take this opportunity. But I had to just get real with myself. Like, am I willing? And if I'm not, we got an issue, <laughs> you know, like got fully surrendered to that place. It was looking good that ended up falling through. And then Chad and I were praying as we came into January. And New Year's Eve, our family was together worshiping, our kids and, and us, um, just bringing in the new year. And this worship song came on. Um, and within that song, it said, Lord, I repent for thinking that I know what's best. Your leadership is perfect and your ways are righteous. Um, there was another part of it. Uh, Let me be found with a heart after you. Um, did I even write it down? May your eyes find this heart is loyal to you. May you be all that's on my mind. I did all of the time. May you be all that's on my mind all the time. Let my heart be torn in two until your will is mine. And I remember that song playing and I was like, kids, quiet. Like we had been playing games and like worshiping and playing. It was fine. But that song came on and it like exploded in my heart. Lord, I repent for thinking that I know what's best. Your leadership is perfect and your ways are righteous. It hit me hard. And I went into January 1st, arms wide open, more convinced than ever before that he would be the best upline to me and my team, no matter what. And I knew I'd continue to make mistakes, but I, I wanted to do this right by him, no matter what it may look like, no matter how many people. And it's been said that I over-spiritualize this. This is a business. Just keep it business. <laughs> so I'm sorry if you feel that way, but I'm not, and totally not at the same time because it changed everything not just for my business, <laughs> for the peace of my heart, for the sanity of my mind, <laughs> for the grace on my life, right? So January 1st, and we're praying, and we're getting a word for the year. Our, our whole family, all of us love to seek the Lord, like for a word, and we'll put that up for the year for all of us and whatever. So praying, and I really felt like God was saying sapphire in April. Made no sense, but he's sapphire in April. I'm pretty sure even December, I may have lost rank. That's quite possible. December and in, in a, or <laughs> Sapphire in April. So I cast vision for the team January 1st, did a Zoom. I don't even think we were doing Zooms back then. <laughs> like kind of just rallied the troops. Like here's what I'm sensing and here's who we are and here's what we're going for. January was the worst January our team has ever had on the face of this planet. So sad, <laughs> so sad. Okay, but we're just casting vision because Sapphire, we're, we're hitting Sapphire in April. So we go into February thinking it's gonna be amazing. It was horrible. I sponsored our team when I was a silver. I went silver in February of 2015 and our team sponsored more ambassadors that month I went silver, prepping for gold the next month, than we did as an emerald team this last February. It was crazy. We added 17 people in February. Slowest month we had had since I was a silver ambassador. And still, 
we are casting vision. Do you know what our IPA contest ended up being? IPA contest. Uh, I don't know what it was. I thought it was something that the Lord was having me put out February 1st. Do you know what it ended up being? February 1st through the 28th, heart condition talks. We talked about bitterness. We talked about perspective. We talked about what is the true definition of success. How do you define success? How do you determine whether or not you're a success? Truly take time tonight or tomorrow to ask yourself that. Because if you think success is only based on your points and your PV and your rank, there, there's a struggle in that, right? So we started, that, that's our, what I thought would be like this daily like IPA thing. It turned into like heart conditions chit chat every single day the entire month of February, while we had the lowest points ever. But I feel like God was setting the stage and relaying that foundation, making sure we knew who we were and why we did this. Why do you post online? Is it for a sale or is it to make a difference? You know, like, oh, we just got through all of that. And then March, as we all know, the iPad contest. So I could totally attribute really like all of this momentum that we've had to these iPads, that was beautiful. We had the highest rate of adding people ever before, and we've had great momentum since. I don't really know what to attribute the momentum that we've had to. It's not because of me. It's timing. It's just been a beautiful harvest season. I don't know how long it'll last, but it also doesn't mean a whole lot to me, you guys. It's really special. But I pray that no one watches our journey and it's like, oh my gosh, like, what am I doing wrong? Because she must be doing it right. <laughs> it's just timing. It's timing. And had I hit it any time sooner, I, I would not have gleaned all of those lessons that I very much needed. And now I recognize there's quite a bit I need to glean for Diamond. You guys, we cast vision for Diamond this month. It kind of felt like last July, though. I just felt like which was good, good prep, but I just felt like we should go for this. And if we reach it, amazing. And if we don't, who cares? Like, hopefully, hopefully you guys have gotten over like the risk of failure. You guys, no one cares. No one. In fact, people sometimes will lean in a little bit closer when they see that you're not afraid to fail. Like, just go for it. The worst that can happen is you're going to end up better off than you were before, right? Like, you're going to make progress. You're going to learn some things. It's amazing. It's fun. So we set a, a vision for Diamond, knowing that it could be amazing. It could be kind of like the iPad month or not. We're totally not hitting Diamond this month. Last Tuesday is when I had clarity on it. Like, this isn't the month, but there is a purpose to it. And do you know, like, if I was to go to, like, a personal trainer, never done it before in my life, but if I was to go to one and say, I really want to increase my speed at running the one mile thing. Um, I really want to increase my speed. What would the first question be? What's your current speed? Like what's your baseline right now? I'm guessing. <laughs> like I know what I'm talking about. Shoot. But this month has set my baseline. It's given me a feel of like exactly where we're at as a team. We just, we've been giving it our all. Where are we at right now? We've had a lot of momentum. We've had a lot of growth, but how's our retention? <laughs> How are we actually doing right now? What's our baseline? Where's our areas of weakness that we need to focus on? What are the heart conditions of people right now? Are they tired? Because we've been in momentum since March. The most momentum we've ever had as a team. Are people feeling tired right now? Like, I don't, I don't even know all the lessons I'm learning still in this process. We aren't hitting diamond. And I don't know when we'll hit diamond. But if I can just leave you with this, because I know I've gone over time. I don't know if any of this even made sense, but guys, God has brought you here for a bigger purpose than your PV, a bigger purpose than your rank. And you don't know today how long he's going to ask you to be here. It might just be for one more month. It might be for another year, five years, or maybe for a lifetime. You don't know. Unless he's made that very, very clear to you, you actually don't know. And so make the most of this process. He has like the best perspective. And so the more you can take time to lean into him, like when I was a little girl, I would sit on my dad's lap and just snuggle. He was big and cozy and comfy. And it was a good setup for my relationship with the Lord right now. Um, to just go ahead and crawl up in his lap, lean in and listen for his heartbeat like I did on my dad when I was a little girl and find out what he's saying. And it, from that place, you won't be concerned. You won't be stressed. You won't be like tossing and turning in the night, trying to figure out what to do to help your team. 
because from his perspective, there's such peace, there's such grace, there's such love. Like he sees it all, he knows it all. He's not freaking out in heaven, like angels, get down there, hurry, like they're in crisis mode, hurry, what are we gonna do? He's never like that, ever. So when we find ourselves like that, that's a clue. You know, like how we help people with their health, right? And all their symptoms are clues. Well, to figure out the clues to your heart condition and where you're at, pay attention to what you're saying. Pay attention to your emotions. Though your heart is crying out with these clues saying, pay attention to me, pay attention. And it's time to lean in to the one that does have that peace that you're looking for. It's time to lean in to the one that will bring clarity and perspective for this journey and this process. Because it is gonna look different than the person to your right and to your left. It's supposed to look different than them. Because people need to know your story not just mine. I don't know how I get even asked to do these talks. I pray they help, but truly like people need your story. They need to hear what you have overcome in your life. This is so much more. And I love that such a big God who created the entire universe and everything that we see around us, <laughs> that he would even care to use network marketing. Like he could laugh at the whole thing. He knows some humans do. He could join them, but he doesn't because he's big enough to actually say, you know what? I'm going to use this. And he refines us through this process. He shapes our character in this process. He teaches us to dream with him. It's beyond just a big house and a fancy car. Dream with him, but embrace the process. I promise you will look back the next time you go on stage, when you earn leaders retreat, when you hit your next rank, I guarantee you will look back and you will realize, yeah, the money's awesome. Like, cool. It's great. <laughs> it's also gone tomorrow, right? Like, it's just money. It's just a title. It's just a prize. It's just a stage. It's just a moment in time. But what you do take with you is your story. What you do take with you are those nuggets that you learn along the way. And you do take with you impact. What will people say at your funeral? What do you want them to say about you right now? That's the way to operate your business. And you watch. I guarantee if you will live your life with this type of purpose, going on to even social media, as silly as it is that once again, God loves to use. If you'll go on there saying, Lord, what can I say today? What can I reveal about myself today? What can I expose about the ugly side of me or my broken heart? What can I do that'll make a difference that makes someone feel loved or that makes someone feel seen or that makes them realize they're not alone in what they're walking through? What can I do to make a difference? If you will shift what can I do to like get a sale? What can I do to earn the Nikes? What can I do to earn leisure retreats? Shift it, shift it. That's not God's perspective right now. Lord, what do you want me to do today? How do you want me to steward my time? Who do you want me talking to? What can I be sharing online today? I guarantee you will see a shift in your business. You might not see it tomorrow. You might not see it in a month or a year from now, but are you willing to be obedient despite the results? I'll say it one more time. I know I've said it twice. I'll say it a third time. God cares more about the condition of your heart than the condition of your business. And that's where I'll end it. I'm so sorry. I've taken up like a whole oh lot of time. Do not be <laughs> sorry. I, I'm still processing. Like God really used you. If I were the only person on this call tonight, it was impactful. And I have seen lots of tears flowing, so I know I'm not the only one. But Krista, thank you so much for allowing God to use you. I mean, I personally needed every single thing. And I mean, you and I have been talking a little bit, so I, I didn't like, that's why I wanted you to do this because you, I don't even know that you know this, but God has used you to make such an impact on me in the last few months because mm -hmm. I got to, a, and I'm not going to go into the whole thing either, but um, I got to a point where I, st I didn't really think it was possible either. And I started wondering, it, and I hate to say this to you guys and my team, but you know, I'm always going to be real with you, but um just, we've just been going back and back and I feel like I've given it everything I can. I've never taken my foot off the pedal. And I think you were the one that said, sometimes God, you have to ask, stop and ask God, is this time for me to rest or is this time for me to run? Because mm -hmm. if you're trying to run when he wants you to rest, you're not going anywhere. And in that, that's the thing is the condition of my heart wasn't where it needed to be. Mm -hmm. But with honestly, you like speaking with you, and, and then going to convention, God did give me peace that yes, you need to keep going, keep running. But, but it, my, my mindset's been so different. I've had peace 
instead of frustration. Like okay. I, this is the time for us to keep running. We, we, and the thing is we've had a lot of great momentum too in the last few months. Um, but I've had peace about it. Whereas if I didn't hear from you, I might have been in that question mode, you know, mm -hmm. but anyway, I just, I can't even thank you enough. Like I, you make me, and I, I, you make me want to go and like shut everything off and get in my Bible. Am I the <laughs> one? Like that is what I feel like doing right now. And like, that's what I want to be said of me, you know, like just hearing you, I just want, I, I want nothing more than just not to go sapphire, not to go die, but to, to know God even deeper and I want others to see that with our team too. And so I can't even thank you enough. I feel like I can't even process the whole thing, but um, I, I'm going to go back and listen because um, I don't, you guys think Kristen needs a podcast? <laughs> that's what I think too. Like, All my spare time. <laughs> yeah. In your spare time, of course. But I pray for you and your, um, your son and um, I love your transparency. And I know that, um, you just make an impact on probably more people than you can even imagine. So thank you, thank you so, so much, Krista. Um, well, we have um, three minutes. So does anyone, we won't keep Krista long either because she has her babies that she needs to, um, hopefully, I don't know if they're sleeping, but um, does anyone have something like you're dying to say or a question that you want to maybe put in the chat? Or um, I know you're getting a lot of, comments about how impactful that was. Mm, I haven't even seen these here. So let's go. If you have something you want to share, just go ahead and share in the comments. But if you don't mind, let's go ahead and just end in prayer. And then um, if we can just end in prayer, and then I'm sure you wouldn't mind anyone reaching out if they have questions or if you want to send me any questions, I can forward it on to Krista. Um, okay. But let's go ahead and end in prayer if you guys don't mind. Dear Heavenly Father, Oh, Lord, thank you so, so much, Jesus, just for, for Krista's heart, Lord. Thank you for her um, willingness to obey you, Lord. I, I just pray that you would help me personally, Lord, to just follow that example and to not forget that you are the one that needs to be glorified through this entire thing. It's easy to get our eyes off of, um, off of you sometimes, Lord, when, when we're in the spotlight and when it's so fun and when we want that rank up or we want those prizes. But Lord, please help us to remember that it is people over points and um and teach us how to make an impact thank you for this vehicle lord help us to always be so grateful for the this company just for the togetherness lord just for the friendships alone i mean i cannot even grasp all of the blessings that plexus has been in my personal life lord in the lives here i pray that you would work in every single heart here and those who are listening lord and i pray that you would give everybody clarity and of exactly how you want them to use this business i pray you'd bring the right people to our team and help us to make an impact on them lord we love you so so much we thank you lord we praise you in um, your name we pray amen all right. Thank you guys. I love you so much. Thank you for hopping on. I feel so sad for the people who missed this tonight, um, but I'm sure they'll watch the, um, the replay. And I know those who are here though, you are here for a reason and God needed you to hear this tonight. And, um, and that is it. So, all right. Thank you everyone. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Krista. You're so welcome. Thank Good night, you guys. Good night. Thank Bye. you. Bye.